birds chirping in the morning, semis roaring by on the freeway nearby. Oh, you guys are loud. What a nice day. What a fantastic day. I'm leaving Amarillo today, guys. So, uh, east on Route 66 is the plan today. Excited to take you guys along. Uh, just so you know, though, this spot right here was not fun to overnight camp last night. It was loud. It's too close to the highway. But again, it is free overnight parking approved by Texas because it's a highway turnout rest stop. So it worked, but man, I really, really am anxious to change things up tonight where we stay. So let's hop back on Route 60. Well, it's I-40, but we'll hop back on. What do you think, Jax? My little navigator, where are we going? You don't know? Okay. Well, I do need new tires, but these aren't new. And I don't think this service station is open right now for business here in Conway Twitty, Con <laughs> Texas. I mean, Conway, Texas has nothing to do with the great country singer Conway Twitty, but just uh, abandon, abandon everything here. This may have been an old restaurant or maybe a movie theater. It's got these uh, six movie theater seats here. Probably a store of some kind. Just tore up completely tore up boy they they really like their spray paint here in Conway actually all of Texas so far has been really colorful and there's a fine line between art and graffiti what's up with the noose hanging here <laughs> so since we left Cadillac Ranch now we're gonna get spin-offs of that everywhere uh, welcome to Volkswagen Ranch uh-huh one, two, three, four, five of these guys. <laughs> they're, they're not Cadillacs, but that is what it is. Route 66. Let me go see if I can find some paints. it up a little bit. I'm really hungry all of a sudden like I could really go for a hamburger or a nice big juicy steak or something or oh so no sorry sorry guys they didn't like that at all get Route 66 back here. Uh, I-40 is literally right next to us now. But we're back on route. 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 It's my route on this route. Pulled off here on uh, Route 66. Get a load of this. It's the Leaning Tower of Texas, I guess is what it is. Welcome to Britain, USA. And that is a Leaning Tower. I don't know why it's leaning, probably on purpose for like tourists to come take pictures and yeah, but pretty cool. Ah, oh, it's so hot. Damn you, Texas. Cool down. Well, I'm here in Groom, Texas. Get a load of this cross. It's huge. This is one amazing Catholic church here. I was waiting to film, been sitting in the RV for a half hour because they're out here doing some maintenance, yard maintenance, but you're, you're going to hear a, a weed eater going no matter what. Look at this cross. Huge. Uh, it's very eerie being here. I'm not going to get into politics or religion on my channel. I'm just uh, sharing this with you so that you can interpret it however you like. Here's the Last Supper.
And although it looks like you can walk up there, I don't see anybody walking up there, and I think that would be disrespectful. But there's the crucifixion up there. Quite an amazing sight. Let me pull out my phone and Google this church and get some information about this cross. Uh, here's what I found on uh, Wikipedia about this giant cross. It says to, that it's a 19-story tall cross, or 190 feet, or uh, 58 meters tall. Surrounding the base of the cross are life-size statues of the 14 stations of the cross. Now inspired by this cross, residents of Effingham, Illinois erected a similar cross that's 8 feet taller, so it's not even the tallest in the country anymore. Many claim this cross to be the largest in the Western Hemisphere, however, there is a larger cross uh, by 18 feet in the Mission Nombre de Dios in St. Augustine, Florida, which by the way, I also filmed that cross when I was there last year. I'll link a card up top if you guys want to check out that video. Some say you can see this cross from 20 miles away on Route 66 or I-40. It's a 2.5 million pound steel cross. And it was also thought to be inspired by another big Texas cross in Ballinger, Texas. So there you go, the big cross. Actually, uh, the wind is starting to affect my ability to stay between the lines. It, it's tough. I don't know uh, quite what the wind speeds and gusts are, but every once in a while they'll hit the RV and I'm like, whoa! <laughs> kind of scary, a little hairy. It's windy up here in North Texas. And I'm going to be getting into tornado country here. So the next two weeks I'm going to be a little on edge, but my Weather Channel app adjusts to where I physically am will get emergency notifications and everything. So, uh, as for today, I need to find a spot to plug in or a boondocking spot to run the generator, but I need air conditioning and I need a break. It's just too warm. So I think I found a spot near water. It's a paid campground, so it's not an RV park, uh, but it's a paid campground. And I will let you know when we get to the lake. So it's uh, $15 a night to uh, camp here with partial hookups. Worth it though. Uh, they got water and electric and they got a dump station on the way out. So I'm going to drive around and find the camp site that I like and then we'll fill this out. So this is it. McLennan Lake Campground. Picnic table, barbecue, uh, fire ring over there. I'm plugged into 30 amp there. They also have 50. They got a really old school water thing. I don't know, I just, I'm, I'm okay with water right now, so I'm not gonna fill up here in Texas. I'm just gonna use my water pump for the night. But, but why is this place empty and abandoned and so peaceful and quiet? I don't know. Do the locals like not even know about it? Also, when I pulled in, th there's, a, there's another spot for RVers. Like I was driving in and it's like this concrete pad where you all park next to each other, no water anywhere in sight. And that's where, that's where a bunch of RVers were at for $15 a night. And then I found this spot on the water by myself with shade tree. And I was like, yep, you don't gotta pay a lot. You gotta pay attention. Meaning I don't think $15 is a lot. That kind of makes up for it when I first got into Texas and I got those two nights free at that aquatic center place. Yeah, so it all evens out, I guess. Jeez, absolutely fantastical awesome. Once the sun sets, I'll plop a chair down here and bring the laptop and do some work, some editing down here at the water. There's my RV, that's how uh, close I am with my own little trail down here. I will mark the GPS coordinates, uh, even though it's a paid site here. Uh, if you just want to spend the day, it's five bucks. That's not bad. But, yep. What do you think about that water view, Jax? It's pretty cool, huh? 
You like water just about as much as I do. What, what, what does that do? <laughs> what exactly does it do? Hi, guy. So, everybody, uh, we're going to chill. Oh, actually, I'm going to do some work, and Jax is going to chill. But I love the view. Anytime I want, I can come outside and look at the lake. But I do have some work to do. Plus, i got a plan ahead. I have absolutely no idea. I literally don't even know where I'm going tomorrow or what I'm going to see. That... That's exciting. No, it, it, it really is exciting to me. I don't I don't mind it at all. So anyways guys, have a good day. Jackson, I'll see you later. Bye bye. Can you flop? Flop, 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 flop. You don't flop on demand anymore. How come? Oh, well I guess just gotta be the right time. Yep, gotta be in the right mood. Alright. Later guys. Hey guys, this is Jax, my kitty cat. I'm his servant, Eric. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel here on RVing. If you like the video, give us a thumbs up below. Make sure you subscribe, check out all our other videos, and keep following us on the road. Thanks, guys.